Now tuned into the greatest. The Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The, the, the Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. Yes. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a call, 219-413-9405. And of course, we will play your take back on our next episode. Now, look, man, it was a great sports weekend. A lot of different games uh, that I watched. It was a a big fight between Ryan Garcia and Debbie Haney. Um, That was huge as well. And I thought that was a pretty good fight. That was probably the best that I've seen Ryan Garcia in any fight that I've ever watched. And I I thought it was great for him that he did win this fight and that he dominated uh, uh, Devin Haney in this fight because, man, he beat the brakes off a dude. (laughs) He beat the brakes off him, and it just looked good from a boxing standpoint. I thought the ref was a little shaky, too, at times, where he should have probably stopped the fight, but he let them continue on. But ultimately, I think most people know that Ryan Garcia should have won that fight by KO uh, because, man, to knock somebody down like five times in, in a match is ridiculous. And then in the seventh round, there was that hit that he had on Devin Haney. It was a, oh, my gosh, nasty left hook. Put him down. The referee wasted like seven seconds moving Ryan Garcia away and doing all kind of other stuff to to almost make sure that Devin Haney was going to get back up. So it was kind of crazy. But above all, bro, Ryan Garcia. Oh, man. Hey, way to way to way to talk your talk and, and back it up in that fight there against Devin Haney, because that was huge. That was huge right there. I, I love that fight. Um, there was also the El Clasico in the La Liga, Real Madrid and Barcelona soccer game. That was a huge game as well. Um, that was dope. I'm um, in the 91st minute. Bellingham, he hit a huge goal that gave Real Madrid the win. And it was that big controversial goal as well uh, between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Uh, it didn't count. It was a goal, but it didn't count for Barcelona. And you couldn't really see it because... The ball didn't cross the line, and, you know, the La Liga, they should have invested in the technology to make sure you can look at the 360 angle in order to see, like, you know, the full the full angles of if it was a goal or not. So, I don't know. It, it was dope, though, but ultimately, if they want to avoid it, they should have inv- invested in the technology to make sure it was avoided. But from the angles that we saw, we weren't able to really see that it crossed the line i didn't see it at least so you know it was dope though i'm glad real madrid won y'all know that's the team i'm always cheering for and i'm super i'm so excited they're they're leading the table right now i think by eight or nine points they've really been doing their thing this uh season and you know i'm excited too that next year they're gonna have mbappe and that's like that's huge man (laughs) that's gonna be so dope anyway Look, man, I got some more stuff to touch on. Actual conversations that I did want to talk about here. Now, the NBA draft or the NFL draft, it's going to be happening this Thursday, April 25th um, in the evening. We can project the Bears to draft Caleb Williams. I'm actually happy with this. I'd have made peace with it by now. And if you're a Bears fan that's out there and you still haven't made peace with it, you got to look at this for what it is, bro. You should be proud of the Bears for turning the page and starting something new. Because I know it was a lot of drama about the Justin Fields and and if they'll keep him and trade him and and other guys were vouching for him. But, bro, honestly, ask yourself, when is the last time you could have confidently looked at the Bears roster and said, you know what? We're better than we were before on paper. We have a lot of weapons on our offensive end. When's the last time you could have looked at the Bears roster and genuinely said that and and believe what you were just saying? Because having Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, DJ Moore, uh, Cole Komet, and then adding the cornerback uh, Jalen Johnson, bro, this is huge for the Chicago Bears, bro. And I know some people are still salty about it, but like, bro, this is huge. Stacking this roster up, you almost put Caleb Williams in a situation where he cannot fail. It would be extremely difficult for a quarterback to not thrive with all of these weapons that he has on the offensive end here. 
And the best part about this is the Bears still have the ninth pick in the draft, which is amazing. They can still make some moves. We've seen GM Ryan Poles. He's been making magic all offseason. So I don't know like why we wouldn't believe that he's not going to continue to do this on draft night and on leading up to the draft night. So I'm excited. Maybe we'll grab another offensive piece, piece with that ninth pick. I think we should. Um, it, there's a lot of good prospects for, for wide receivers and tight ends and stuff um, in the draft this year. So, you know, I'm excited about that. But the, the biggest thing with the NFL draft is, or with the Chicago Bears, I should say, is we got to make sure we actually develop a quarterback because the Bears, they have not been doing a good job at developing quarterbacks in the past. And now that we have someone who is clearly the best quarterback this year coming out of college, you know, we got to really take advantage of that because these these opportunities don't come too often. And, you know, when they're here, you got to make sure we capitalize. Caleb Williams, that's a bad dude, bro. That's a bad dude. And I know I hated on him a little bit back and forth because media, they push these narratives that's kind of crazy sometimes. And I, I can't stand hearing all of it. But ultimately, when you compare Caleb Williams to these other guys in the league, Drake May, um, you, you look at um, Michael Penix Jr., Josh Daniels, Caleb Williams is that he's the best quarterback in this draft. And we get an opportunity to have him on the team. So we got to do right by Caleb Williams, bringing him to the Chicago Bears. Um, other than that, though, another thing I'm interested in with the draft is where J.J. McCarthy is going to go. And, you know, I, I wasn't really intrigued by this, but, you know, it's crazy to me how all of a sudden J.J. McCarthy has become one of the top quarterback prospects in the NFL, when J.J. McCarthy was not that guy at all in the regular season. And, and I say, even after winning a national championship, there wasn't one person in their right mind that thought J.J. McCarthy was the best quarterback in college football. Did not happen. People tuned in um, to watch Blake Corum and the rest of the defense on Michigan's team on that championship run. And not to say J.J. McCarthy isn't good, but when you look at the other quarterbacks that's in the league right now, Drake May, Josh Daniels, Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, Jordan Travis, people tuned in to college football games to watch those quarterbacks go to work. People tuned in to watch Bo Nix go to work. People tuned in to watch Josh Daniels go to work. People tuned in to watch Drake May go to work on the field. People didn't tune in to watch J.J. McCarthy hand the ball off to Blake Corum 17 times in the game. That's not the case at all. It was exciting quarterbacks to watch. And J.J. McCarthy just wasn't one of those guys um, in college football. And, you know, nobody turned to a Michigan game and said, let's see J.J. McCarthy go off this game or let's see what he can do. Find me footage of J.J. McCarthy lighting a team up throwing 50 yard bombs. That footage does not exist. I can't say the same thing for a Drake May. I can't say the same thing for a Michael Penix Jr. Those guys have those highlight footages in their arsenal right now. They have that but they have that throw in their bag. Not just a pro day thing, but something we've seen on actual game day. Those guys have shown in an actual game that they can throw bombs accurately over 50 yards. J.J. McCarthy, you might find one or two plays of him doing that, but you're not seeing him do that consistently. And you did not see him do that consistently at the University of Michigan. So, you know, it, hey, I'm not saying he's not going to be a good quarterback. I, I'm not doubting him in terms of what he can become in the NFL. But as of right now, based on what I've seen in his college career and, and up to the NFL draft, there's plenty of quarterbacks that's better than J.J. McCarthy. <laughs> plenty of quarterbacks that's better than J.J. McCarthy. At best, I see uh, J.J. McCarthy going to the NFL and having a career like Mac Jones or Zach Wilson because he hasn't impressed me outside of handing the ball to Blake Corum. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's my talk on that. Um, Anyway, draft night happening April 25th, Thursday afternoon. That's this week. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the rest of these teams do. You know, Washington, they has a, a, a high number pick. Um, you got New England. They've been talking about trading up and trading down and stuff for their picks right now. The Vikings are obviously in negotiations. They're the last team to talk about J.J. McCarthy and what he can do. 
Um, other than that, though, shoot me a call, 219-413-9405. If you heard something you agree with, disagree with, or even if you just want to go ahead and share a hot take uh, of your thoughts on the draft or something else that I got coming up in just a second. We got some NBA playoff news coming up. Um, some more sports news as well. We're going to take a quick break, play some ads, and we'll be right back. All right, let's get into it, man. News for the run. The NBA playoff, here's some updates for that. The Minnesota Timberwolves, they beat the Phoenix Suns in game one, 120 to 95. Anthony Edwards on the Timberwolves went off during that game. 33 points, six assists, and nine rebounds. And boy, he was talking some trash to Kevin Durant as they was playing too. That's always entertaining when you see that going on. Um, the Los Angeles Clippers, they smacked up the Dallas Mavericks in game one. James Harden, he came alive and finished the game with 28 points, 8 assists, and he hit 6 three-pointers in that game. They were saying this is vintage Harden, and, and that's what he looked like. That was non-negotiable. Boy was definitely going off. Uh, the Denver Nuggets, they were too much for the Lakers in Game 1, and we'll say, see Game 2 take place tonight. Um, in the Eastern Conference, it was a blowout after blowout. Uh, the Celtics, they had full control over the Heat as they won Game 1, 114-94. And the Bucs, they dominated the Pacers in game one. And Damian Lillard, he had himself a game. He scored 35 points in the first half. But weirdly enough, he didn't get a single bucket in the second half, even though he played 18 minutes in the second half. So that's like the, the whole idea of, uh, yeah, you start the day off strong and productive, but by lunchtime, you like, all right, I've had enough. Because <laughs> he just did. That was kind of crazy. I seen it was a sports bet, too, of multiple betters. They bet Damian Lillard over 35 and a half points. And he didn't hit it because he didn't score in the entire second half. I would have been furious. I would have been furious about that. Oh, man, that's tough. Anyway, the New York Knicks fans, they were celebrating like they won a championship after winning game one over the 76ers. Um, currently, they're playing right now. And they're uh, winning over the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, what is that? 62. Nope. Nope. They're losing right now. 62 to 65. Um, it just came back in the third quarter. But this game, this series is going toe to toe right now. And, you know, ultimately, Philly, they, they're trying to they're trying to steal a game from the New York Knicks. Knicks they ain't going to play around with you. They definitely play hard. But ultimately, I still think the Philadelphia 76ers is going to win this series. Um, now, former NBA shooting guard J.J. Redick is looking to take on a new position in the NBA. The Charlotte Hornets will be interviewing J.J. Redick for the head coaching position. So that'll be interesting to see if J.J. Redick does get a head coaching position in the NBA. Now, moving over to the NFL, former Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan has officially retired after 16 years of playing in the NFL. And the New York Jets, they've officially moved on from Zach Wilson. Jets sent them over to the Denver Broncos for a 6th and 7th round draft pick. And moving over to the MLB, the Chicago Cubs, they split a four-game series against the Miami Marlins. Next up, they play the Houston Astros. I'll be also attending that game, so I'm super excited about that. The game I went to against the Marlins, it was cold as hell, but it was a good game, I will say. <laughs> it was definitely dope, man. And, um, you know, I've I seen some good baseball. Imanaga pitched. And, you know, we love to see Imanaga pitch at any baseball game. And that led me to thinking they were going to win, which they did. But, you know, I had previously thought it was going to be a blowout going into the game because I'm like, you know, we got a good lineup. We had uh, uh, Bellinger or Bellinger. He was batting. Bush was batting. Cooper was batting. Like, it was, it was a solid lineup. From what I seen, so I was anticipating the Cubs to, you know, really smack them up, but it ended up being kind of a back and forth game. So I was definitely excited about that. Um, I'm hoping the Astros game on the 24th is is very similar as well. Um, ultimately, you know, I, I want to see the Cubs win, of course, but nothing more than I, I really just want to see a good game above all above all. I just really want to see a good game. Um, other than that, though, man, look, NBA playoffs. They are here. Let's get into it. The Dallas Mavericks, they are playing the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, game one, the Clippers, they won 109 to 97. And Mavs, they were struggling. I, I think above all, this was just a bad game from the Dallas Mavericks. They did not start off hot. They didn't start off good. 
They played bad. They 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 were missing everything they threw up. Kyrie couldn't really make shots. Luka Doncic couldn't make shots. Zubak was grabbing every single board that came off the rim. Mavs were struggling to get their offense started very on. And they had three assists all the way like into the second quarter. And that's very unlikely for the Dallas Mavericks because usually we're seeing Luka Doncic have three assists alone by himself after the first quarter. So it was interesting to see the Dallas Mavericks fold the way they did in that first game. Um, this is not the Dallas Mavericks that I was used to seeing. This isn't the Dallas Mavericks that I said was going to win this series in six. Uh, midway through the second quarter, they were shooting two for 14 from deep. Luka was broke himself. Kyrie was broke himself. And it was a bad game all, all over. It was a bad game. Um, and, and, and I want to also throw in, too, on the Clippers part, they played this game without Kawhi. And I can't even imagine if they had Kawhi playing this game because Harden did his thing. He clearly stepped up. But if they did have Kawhi being aggressive as he usually is, this would have really, really gotten ugly. And that probably would have made me lose a lot of faith in the Dallas Mavericks. But, you know, it is only one game. And, and you know, one game can't tell the full story. Obviously, it's a seven-game series. I think the Dallas Mavericks just have to bounce back in game two. Um, they got to move on to the next one. Make sure um, they they fix this this broke jump shot and fix <laughs> getting killed on the boards as well. They got to fix a couple different things, but you almost have an advantage when you lose that first game in the NBA playoffs because you have the ability to go back and tweak different things that you know you did wrong. And the good thing about the Dallas Mavericks losing this game is that the answers were obvious for them. It wasn't like they played perfect and they just lost or they didn't finish and close out the game. It was obvious. They just did not shoot well this game. And by the time the second half came along, the Clippers was already hot. They were running along. They, they, they took the lead and they ran with it. So, you know, those things are obvious fixes that the Dallas Mavericks need to do. Um, much like the, the, the Los Angeles Lakers as well. That series is kind of crazy going on with the different Nuggets. The Nuggets, they won game one, 114 to 103. Um, and I think Denver Nuggets are still going to win this game in six. I, it would be hilarious. It would be hilarious to see the Nuggets sweep the Lakers. That would be very, very interesting. And that would just be funny. It would be a field day for social media if that happened. Um, I'm not opposed to seeing it happen, but again, I, I just doubt LeBron ends up losing to a team that he got swept by. I, I can't see him losing another four straight games to a team that he lost four straight games to the previous year. That just really blows my mind. And, you know, I, I'm sure Lakers are going to come back, and make some adjustments. But the biggest takeaway from this game was the fact that D'Angelo Russell played so so bad he shot one for nine from a uh, three-point line and, and he just couldn't get anything to fall it was a lot of mistakes on the Lakers behalf and Anthony Davis boy I keep telling y'all in order for the Lakers to win Anthony Davis has to play like the star that he is LeBron James we, we know what we gonna get out of him we know what we getting out of LeBron he's gonna give you 20 something he's gonna probably make some mistakes but even he didn't play great last night but Times where he's rolling, times where he's playing good, he needs that co-star in Anthony Davis to hold his own down there against Jokic. I've seen the Lakers try to double-team Jokic, but kudos to the Nuggets because the, their, their help ended up making shots. Kyle Pope made shots. Michael Porter Jr. made shots. Jamal Murray made shots. All those guys came alive and they really helped Jokic, which is something I said the Denver Nuggets were going to do because they're a very talented team. The Lakers, on the other hand, Anthony Davis looked out of shape. D'Lo looked like he was just, just begging for a make. And, and the role guys, they didn't really shake anything up. They, they tried to play defense, but ultimately, when the effort from your top guy who is the leader isn't there, it's hard for the rest of your guys to stay motivated and feel like they actually have a shot at winning. And that's something that we see from LeBron and Anthony Davis all the time, because even though those guys are there, sometimes they're present, they're giving you these big number type of games, that wasn't one in game one. Obviously, they can go and fix that um, coming back game two, but it all starts with the top. If Anthony Davis and LeBron James are coming out flat, playing flat, low energy, um, kind of just playing sloppy, it's going to trickle down to the rest of the team. And therefore, you can't be mad at D'Angelo Russell. You can't be mad at Austin Reeves. You can't be mad at Roy for, for playing sloppy and giving low effort because when the stars on your team is giving low effort, what do you think the other people are going to do that's watching the stars on your team do that? 
it's not going to be good. So um, I think the Lakers are going to end up probably losing game two as well. Denver Nuggets have been dominant at home, man. I think it's been like 10 straight playoff games that they've won at home. You can't quote me on that because I do need to fact check that. But um, I, would, I would say check that out. I, I know it's something around those lines where they've been dominant at home, um, especially in the playoffs. So, you know, I, I think the Nuggets, they definitely going to win game two. Going three will be the late the Lakers best chance of like making an adjustment and, and figuring something out in that game three. But above all, I still got Lakers losing in six and the Nuggets winning in six games. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers got swept or I, I would be surprised because I just, <laughs> I can't see LeBron falling short again, bro. Not getting a single game. is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, look, man, I got the final note for y'all. I'm going to just say this, man. Do what brings you peace. Do what brings you peace. Um, I'm not going to try and get too deep today into what that means, but it's really just a simple message. Do what brings you peace. Treat yourself. Acknowledge that you've been working hard. Acknowledge that you, you know, take care of your responsibilities and do what you need to do. But ultimately, bro, treat yourself to whatever you got to do to make sure you're peaceful, um, especially if it's a healthy habit, especially if it's something, you know, that that is going to benefit your mental state or your body. So, um, other than that, man, that's all I got for y'all. I appreciate you for hanging with me. Appreciate you for tuning in. Send this to a cousin, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, a co-worker, anyone you know who enjoys sports. I promise you they will not mind. But until then, man, I'm about to watch this Lakers and Nuggets game that's coming on. Um, the rest of these games looks like they're finishing up. Uh, you got the Cleveland Cavaliers. Boy, they smacking the Orlando Magic right now. I'm going to have to renege on what I was saying about the Magic winning the six games. Man, it's, it's looking rough for them. Um, anyway, man, we got some good basketball coming up. I'll see y'all Thursday. Until then, we'll be back later on next week. And so on and so on and so on.